Today on the podcast, I'm joined by the actor behind Ronnie Bailey, Corrie's entrepreneurial uncle who's been eyeing up the ladies of Weatherfield for two years now, here to chat about his time on the show, his relationship with the other cast and a charity workout challenge that he's got coming up soon. It's Vinter Morgan. Vinter, welcome to the podcast. Hi, love the introduction, by the way. Thank you very much. How are you doing? <laughs> Real good, real good, real good, real Lovely. good. Lovely. Well, thank you for joining me today. Now, you, you've been on Corey for two years now, haven't you? You started early yeah. 2021. So how how would you describe the past two years on the cobbles? Well, um, it's been uh, absolutely uh, uh, a life-changing experience. It's been absolutely uh, life-enhancing, beautiful uh, um, uh, uh a team of people to work with um mm -hmm. i actually started back in 2020 um which was, was it was it towards the end of that where, yeah 2020 uh, november okay uh, okay and i filmed my first scenes in december so in the height of covid mm -hmm. but it's been great it's been beautiful it's been a, a tremendous experience Lovely. Well, looking at your past work before Corey, yeah. you'd been involved in a few films, some shorts, the odd TV episode here and there, and an awful lot of theatre work, it looks like, yeah. as well. So what was it that made you want to make the leap into serial drama? Well, yeah, I mean, uh, most of my bread and butter uh, was uh, classical theatre and stuff like that, which mm. uh, I enjoyed immensely. Um, but having the opportunity to work on such an iconic show as coronation street something that has lived within my home over many many decades was just an opportunity which i leapt with with both hands yeah. um and uh yeah it was just uh the moment in time to really kind of um uh stretch my acting muscles mm. in that medium yeah so curry has been um sort of you've been growing up watching it have you oh yeah of course i mean ever since i was a little nipper i mean <laughs> I mean, you know, that, that famous music has been inside my home all throughout many moments of my infancy and my teenage mm. years. It was a staple diet of uh, the family, you know, yeah. um, because back in those days when I was younger, mm -hmm. um, there was only three channels, right? Yeah. So... <laughs> it must have been um, weird, like stepping out onto the cobbles as an actual character in the show then. It was, um, yeah, it was surreal um, and, and beautiful at the same time because, um, you know, I, I never, ever thought that uh, that would be something I would have been doing when I was like five years old. Because mm, I didn't know yeah, I yeah. Natural, right? how, how was the character of Ronnie kind of sold to you then? What, what was the description that you made you think, yeah, I'm going to go for that part? Well, I thought you were kind of reading from the the the, the script of what was given to me because that <laughs> was a very good uh, way of putting him across. I mean, it was this guy who basically was an entrepreneur uh, who uh, had made life um, happen in his own image, kind of mm -hmm. lived by his own uh, code, if you like, um, was someone who was uh, able to... Um, take on an idea and make it work. Someone who was also uh, very much a people person, um, somebody who loved to engage with others, to be the life and soul of the party, and uh, somebody who um, very much likes the attention of women. <laughs> well, we'll come to that in a little bit. I wanted to kind of focus on the Bailey family themselves for a bit yeah. because they'd been in the show a couple of years before you got there. They'd been sort yeah. of shown as a very close family who'd once had a fair bit of money behind them, but who'd had yeah. to take a bit of a downgrade because of Ed's poor financial choices, should we say. So how would you say that throwing the character of Ronnie into the mix has changed things for the Baileys over the past two years? Yeah, I think um, when he, uh, again, uh, came into uh, the programme um, two years ago, uh, it was also to uh, bring in a particular storyline um, around uh, yeah. the uh, past, uh, uh, well, <laughs> I'm going to call it discretions with uh, <laughs> Aggie, um, but it was uh, um, to kind of see whether or not um uh the uh the, the, that there was a love child that was the, his own child which was mm -hmm. uh michael that, that was the storyline and it was how he was going to break it to his brother because obviously he loves his brother but at the same time um you find ronnie as a person 
who has everything, has wealth, but doesn't have love and doesn't have children. Mm. So you see a man who's who was searching um, for uh, answers and 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 closure on yeah. on that particular yeah. subject. So it kind of really stirred things up for the mm. Bailey, you know, in mm. terms of um, uh, the relationship between Aggie and and Ed, and obviously the the relationship between uh, Michael and his parents. So uh, and and of course, you know, um, how would the the relationship between the two brothers, you know, be able to uh, sustain itself after uh, that? Uh, you know, disclosure. Sure, sure. I mean, do you yeah. do you think that Ronnie is was a little bit disappointed to find out that Michael wasn't <laughs> actually his son in the end? Yeah, I think Ronnie, um, being that he is uh, generally a good natured and well intentioned kind of person, just sometimes his flamboyance puts him in the wrong the wrong kind of place or does something slightly uh, go something that slightly goes awry. I think, um, yeah, he was happy that. Um, the relationship between him and his brother Ed uh, would not be, you know, kind of um, superseded by the fact that uh, suddenly now Ed has to come to terms with Michael not being his son. So in some ways he was relieved for Ed, mm. but at the same time he still gets the opportunity uh, to be involved with Michael. And I think he's very much... Uh, enjoying uh, the ability to be a father figure yeah. uh, to uh, his brother's uh, children. So mm. in some way, he still gets that that ability to to do that. I think you're right. I mean, you know, potentially there is the, a craving there for him to have a family of his own um, because obviously we meet Ronnie at a particular age where, you know, at that point you would expect um, put potentially uh, someone to kind of, you know, um, put his roots down and start a family. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, do you think that everything's cool between him and Aggie now? Because she wasn't happy to see him turn <laughs> up on the street at first, was she? No, she wasn't. Uh, and uh, it's played so wonderfully well by Lorna. She's a great friend and a great actress and someone I enjoy uh, working with day in, day out. Um, it's always a joy when we're doing stuff. Um, and yeah, I think it's it's they, there's always some residue of of the past that's there and and also, I, I think that she, uh, uh, the character, um, uh, always sees Ronnie as someone who kind of uh, gets, has a bad influence on, on Ed or has a, <laughs> uh, a controlling, um, uh, you know, uh, manipulation sometimes, but more <laughs> to do with the fact that he can, he can kind of, he has a powers of persuasion. Yeah. Uh, that she she doesn't like yeah, him to does. have. <laughs> well, you do have a you have, do have another lady on your arm to distract you know, haven't you? The lovely Debbie Webster. So, um, oh, how yes. important would you say that relationship is to Ronnie? Oh, mega, really, really is. I mean, here is a lady who has panache, style, uh, just as much, even more flamboyant. So, you know, so Roddy's learning <laughs> from that. And also the business acumen. Um, yeah. So he's he's found someone who he can relate to on that level and 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 he can share ideas with. Hmm. And um and 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 it's yeah, it's been a, a wonderful, wonderful connection. Yeah. It's it's it must have been quite cool to find out that you were going to be paired with her because even though Sue Devaney had gone a long time without being on the show, I mean she she was back in it in the eighties. So to yeah. find out that you were going to be paired up with a bit of a legacy character on the street, that must have been quite cool for you. Oh, it was amazing. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, I mean Sue Devaney is just a tremendous uh, actress. Uh, mm. A comedic timing is genius uh her, her ability to uh you know just make a scene pop is just great so it's been a fantastic opportunity to work with her and uh and to develop uh this relationship it's been mm. fantastic really yeah 
She, she's fab. She came on the podcast a couple of years ago, actually, and we had we had a nice little chat. And she's she's so you know vibrant and full of full of fun. Yeah. And I've loved yeah. having her back on the show. Yeah, yeah. No, it, it's that. So it's like that on set, you know. And mm. we have a we have a vibe together, and um, and it's it's lovely to explore it um as actors um and you know and 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 see it portrayed as the characters on screen mm. uh but yeah it's been tremendous been really 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 lovely yeah i mean you were also vibing with jenny for a bit for a while weren't you yeah i mean <laughs> that, that could yeah, have gone a different direction it could have yeah i mean it was t- yeah two really strong uh matriarchs um and it was such a blessing uh to work with them both um, and explore stories because um, uh, Sally Ann is a consummate professional and mm. so uh, adept at storytelling. And it was so good to just um, work with them both. I mean, I was just, I mean, I, I just felt like uh, the lucky boy who ended up in a sweet shop as a fiber mm-hmm. old, told you can have any sweet you want. You know, <laughs> it was just uh, a real dream come true to work with both of them because they're just two, as I said, very strong uh, matriarchs on the show and um and it's great you know uh as an actor you because you learn from working with different people and uh you know I've learned loads it's been great mm-hmm. yeah. I have to say though uh Vinter that I wasn't too happy with the part that Ronnie played in the breakup of Johnny and Jenny's marriage because I, I did like them as a couple well you know I mean it's <laughs> subjective you know it, it, it seemed as if it was going someplace else anyway you know uh before Ronnie came along and I suppose in some way it just uh it was the 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 thing that broke the ice if you like yeah. you know um yeah. but yeah I mean working uh with Richard Hawley as well was fab you know that was mm. brilliant that that mm. That that storyline was fantastic. It was great, but yeah, I know, I know, uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, Corey fans that love <laughs> that uh, particular relationship. So I, uh, as been to the act, I feel it for them, you know. But Ronnie, <laughs> Ronnie didn't really care too much. <laughs> Did you ever think that you might end up as being like the next Rover's landlord alongside Jenny? Well, no, not really. I mean, for me, I just um, I take stories as they come, really, you know, and and that's the uh, going back to one of your original questions about um, what was it like or or why did I want to go on a show like Coronation Street? It's the fact that you get to tell these stories, new stories every day. You know, Mm. it's just fantastic to wake up, get on set and then to receive scripts and go, wow, this is where I'm going now. This is great. (laughs) Okay, we're doing this. So wherever the story goes. I go and yeah. Um, and yeah, there's never a dull moment. You know, as I say, the the characters I work with at the moment are just so incredible, and um, I'm very lucky. Mm. I mean, speaking of Jenny, the the person who seems to have his eye on her now is Stephen, who you've you've also kind of got involved in this story a little bit, haven't you? The serial killer <laughs> oh, Stephen just, Reed. Just just skirmishes, yeah, just just little skirmishes, really. Uh, no, Todd, uh, who plays um, Stephen, is a fantastic guy, great yeah. actor. And uh, it's lovely to see um, uh, what he's uh, been doing over the last months on screen. It's been great. Um, And yeah, I think what you're actually relating to is the uh, storyline with um, um, Ronnie being a kind of father figure to uh, Michael, trying to kind of uh, get him to stand up for himself, to believe Mm -hmm. in himself and giving him these pep talks and stuff so that was the way that the character got um some uh some connection uh with uh Todd's character Stephen mm. but that's why that's do, it why do you think that um that Michael turns to Ronnie rather than his dad for this you know this business advice is it just Ooh, because of you trying to cook up another storyline <laughs> are you trying to cook up another storyline <laughs> I see what you're trying there. Well, I I don't know. I think um, it's because Ronnie is a businessman, essentially. And I think in that regard, um, not that uh, Michael has less respect for his father because his father has has done his thing on his own terms as well. But Mm. Ronnie's very flamboyant. His business, um, where he made his money, was a T-shirt business. Um, So there's a, a correlation there, which I think... Michael kind of um, seeks his advice. Yeah. And I think also Ronnie's a kind of guy 
who can be ruthless and uh you know and even if he can read the room he still puts his foot in it um so he's the kind of guy even if he's not asked for his opinion he would give his opinion yeah so he's kind of in your face like that so that's probably why with all the um because you, you've appeared on the screen quite recently with, with Michael doing all this kind of stuff yeah. and with, the, with the Stevens story and yeah. I imagine that when there's a serial killer story going on on the street a lot of the actors suddenly re- think oh could I be next on the shopping block I mean have you any any worries about um Stephen turning to, to Ronnie for his next victim well you know um who knows getting any spoilers, of course. <laughs> who knows what's gonna happen you know I mean it, you know it, it it is what it is you know we'll see what happens but um one thing that is for certain is that um uh obviously you know the crescendo of that story is going to be something which a lot of people are going to be keyed into yeah. and are going to want to see yeah absolutely i, I can't wait i'm i'm loving it honestly <laughs> so up until <laughs> recent up until recently ronnie would have been described as the latest member of the Bailey clan. But just recently, we've welcomed um, Shanique Sterling Brown playing Dee Dee Bailey oh, onto yes. the show. So um, how have yes. you enjoyed having her on the, st- on the show? Oh, man, it's been so great uh, to, to have Shanique. Um, she's just uh, she's just a, a lovely human being, mm-hmm. fabulous actor. And um, what she brings to the show is, 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 is very, very good. It's very beautiful. Yeah, I, I think that there's not been a whole load with you and her, have there so far? Scenes wise, there's a bit, bit no, we've had, a, we've there, had but... a few scenes, but not not loads, but a few yeah. scenes, few kind of establishing kind of you know, uh, family scenes and stuff. Yeah. Um, but I'm sure we'll we'll do some stuff, uh, yeah. as time goes on. Yeah, so when the Baileys first came into the show, a lot was made of them being Coronation Street's first black family on the street, and we've seen yeah. them had a few stories relating to racism and, and dealing with um, those kind of issues over the year so what does it mean to you to be part of that aspect yeah no so that that's really means a lot um you know obviously um it's something which is uh you know iconic um will go down in history and um and something i'm very proud to be part of um and it's just great to kind of um um tell stories uh from from that perspective inside uh you know um uh that uh particular um you know uh story mm, mm, street sure, sure so you you just recently passed your two-year anniversary on the show what would you say have been some of your most memorable moments working on it um oh man it yeah that's a good question um you know i seriously have to just say and I know I'm not trying to cop out here, but <laughs> all of them. I mean, it's just, you know, from the first day I, I did my first scene in the Rovers, that was amazing. Um, you know, uh, being in the, the Bistro was amazing. You know, mm. all these iconic, um, um, you know, places that I'd seen and suddenly I was there. It was just, it's all all particularly beautiful. Um, yeah. I, re- um, I really enjoyed... Um... All the, all the Horror Nation Street stuff a couple of years ago with the sinkhole <laughs> yeah. opening. And Ronnie, Ronnie was involved yeah. in discovering the sinkhole, wasn't he? Yeah, 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 yeah. No, that was a, that was incredible. Oh, yeah. All of that was just incredible, incredible. Um, the, uh, the, well, I remember the rain, the rain, the rain, the rain. It was just great. It was really yeah. good. Really good fun. Really yeah. good fun. Yeah. Yeah. So um, another reason you've come onto the podcast today is because you wanted to talk about a charity event you've got coming up next month, the uh, the High Rocks CrossFit yeah. competition. So I've been yeah. reading about it. That, this seems like quite a challenge, Vin, to t- tell me about it. No, it really, really is. Um, <laughs> sometimes I, I, I wake up in the morning and go, am I really, why am I doing this? This is, uh, <laughs> why, why? Um, but yeah, it's uh, basically, uh, it's a... Uh, crossfit challenge uh where you have eight kilometers you've got to run but interspersed between each kilometer is one functional workout Mm -hmm. Uh, so one kilometer run one functional workout and you repeat that uh eight times um and uh there's a real stiff rule book you know you've got to you know perform all the exercises um you know uh down to a t you can't you got you know you got to do them in a particular fashion that yeah. is 
uh, seen as credible by high rock standards. Oh, wow. um, and it all takes place at the XL uh, Centre in London on oh, the yeah. 2nd of May. Mm-hmm. Um, so what sort of and- workouts do you mean? Is that like, is, that, is it running in like weights or what, what are we talking okay. about? So, uh, for instance, you'll do like a one kilometer run, then 1000 meter row, and then do another one kilometer uh-huh. run, and then you do a 1000 uh, ski erg, and then you do another kilometer run, and then you do 50 war balls, and then you do <laughs> uh, sandbag uh, squats, uh, lunges, and um, and uh, what's, what, what's one of the other ones that you've got to do? I think it's the yeah sled pulls and mm-hmm. and um, uh, sled push and stuff like that, which is quite explosive for your heart rate, you know. Yeah, I bet. Um, but yeah, yeah, you know, it's all for a good purpose. Um, it's all for Macmillan mm-hmm. uh, Cancer Support, uh, a charity that is very, very, very close to my heart. And um, I uh, really wanted to do something uh, for charities. Uh, it's coming up to a birthday of mine. And rather than, um, you know, kind of uh, do anything kind of celebratory, in, uh, I really wanted to just do something which was uh, about trying to, you know, um, raise awareness uh, mm-hmm. about uh, this wonderful charity that um, does such great work um, in such hard circumstances. Mm. So uh, that's what it's all for. Yeah, I think, I mean, there's so many of us who've known somebody who's yeah. Macmillan have had to work with at some point over, uh, unfortunately, over their time. So, I mean, I think we've all got a bit of a connection to Macmillan. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And, um, you know, obviously it, 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 um, it is a stark reality that, um, you know, uh, uh, in terms of statistics, that many of us will will know someone who has or is uh, suffering with cancer and um uh as i say the macmillan nurses are at the very cutting edge of, mm. of that support and um some of the work they do in palliative care is is second to none and um i just think that um you know wherever there is an opportunity where you know uh people can be giving sustenance even at their most darkest hour and comfort and care um it, it is is something that should be rewarded yeah, absolutely. I agree. And and I think this particular challenge that you're taking on, it seems like it just fits you just fine as well. I mean, th- there's always lots of kind of fitness pictures and videos of yeah. you on your Instagram. So would you would you say that would you agree <laughs> that personal fitness is quite important to you? Yeah, well, it has been something which uh yeah, I I I I I tend to enjoy and I tend to try to keep up. Uh, but I've never ever ever in my life taken on a, a challenge like this and I mm. I do wonder as the knees be- begin to creak and the back begins <laughs> to ache why on earth am I deciding <laughs> to do this right now but um I suppose uh I'm trying to I, I, I I'm just uh I, I'm up for the challenge and um so I'm really really looking forward to it and hopefully um you know uh, if I don't cross the line someone will push me across the line <laughs> so uh, what sure can people okay. do if they want to support you in this winter oh well um well I mean just engage in the charity really um you know uh see what they do um and you know and and if you'd like to take any active role in supporting them anything you can do to support them whether it is uh, a coffee morning or uh, doing some sort of events or even if you uh, can donate towards them uh, that would be fantastic mm. that would be great do you have a just giving page or anything like that oh i do have a just giving page and um and i, I do have it kind of splattered across all my socials and stuff there's a nice little qr code that people can scan and if they want to uh donate they can um and uh obviously uh, um that will go towards raising um money uh for matt millen fantastic um uh, it's been it's been lovely speaking to you today um vinter uh I, I i think there's still lots of depths to plumb for for ronnie i think there's there's so much they could still do with this character and i'm really looking forward to seeing where you go next I mean, have you got any ideas about what kind of thing you'd like to see ronnie doing in the future well you know um i'd like to see ronnie get up to doing lots of ronnie stuff um and what that ronnie stuff is 
we'll have to wait and see because uh, it's all bubbling so yeah. we'll see <laughs> well again thank you so much for coming on the podcast today always lovely to to meet you people from the curry cast and um really best of luck for this challenge at the beginning of may thank you so much and it's lovely chatting with you cheers bye-bye Thank you.